Hi guys, so I just took my CAM exam, which is my certified apartment manager exam, and I just wanted to share with you the math equations that I memorized to pass the test. I did pass the first time around. It had more math than I was expecting. I would say it was about 30% of the questions were math related, so I'm really glad I remember these equations. Um, Regardless, if you want to take the CAM course or if you're just a property manager wanting to know um, simple things like NOIs and cap rates and return on investments, then this is really good handy math. Or if you're a real estate investor or just getting into it, this is going to be really handy for you. So without further ado, let's get started. So first off, we're going to start with our GPR, which is our gross potential rents. And this is um, any apartment or manager, property manager's dream. It is if your apartment complex is fully occupied, there are no vacancies, and all of the units are rented at market value. So this is when you are getting your base case scenario. So you're going to take your GPR, and you're going to minus your vacancies. So on the exam, they'll give you usually like a 5% vacancy rate, or they'll give you a number. Just know how to do percentages. You'll need to know like 5% of 2 million, stuff like that. Um, so uh, when you subtract that, you're going to get your TRR, which is your total rent revenue, which is obvious. Um, and then if you add your other income, which is like income from pet rent, parking, laundry, cable, whatever, um, when you add that, you, you're going to get your effective gross income. And then you're going to subtract your other expenses. And you're going to end up with your NOI which is something that you're going to use a lot in real estate investing or property management. I'm sure you heard that. So your NOI minus your debt services, minus your replacement reserves, and minus capital expenses equals your cash flow. That's another term that you're going to use a lot. So after you get your cash flow, to get your cash on cash value, you are going to divide it by your initial investment. So whatever you put into the property, whatever the property costs, and then your cash on cash is a percentage. So after you divide it, then you times it by 100 so that you get it in an actual percentage. And that number is your cash on cash return. Also, a very handy term that you're gonna use a lot. So if you memorize all of this, uh, this chart right here is like the number one thing you're going to need for your exam. And um, yeah, just take a couple minutes and like just really memorize it. What I did is I noticed that it goes minus, plus, and then the rest are all minus until you get down to the bottom and divide. So because initially I made a few mistakes by doing subtracting when I should have done adding so just pay close attention to that and memorize that little chart and memory dump it as soon as you begin the exam just put it on a little piece of paper on your scrap paper and you can refer back to it throughout the course or throughout the exam okay so the next thing you're going to need to know is how to calculate your NOI your cap rate and your value so these are kind of like algebra, they're all interchangeable, really easy. The NOI, just remember the NOI is the only one that you multiply. So it's cap rate times value, or value times cap rate. Obviously it doesn't matter the order. So that one's easy because that one's multiplication. And then cap rate and value are both simple division problems. So cap rate, easy, NOI divided by value sorry it's a bit delayed I'm doing voiceover because my screen won't record my voice at the same time 
and then value is NOI divided by cap rate. So really easy, cap rate and value are both NOI divided by whatever the opposite it is then. So just remember these three terms, NOI, cap rate, and value. You can also, I made mean, like an even more simple little chart so that I could just remember it really easily and dump it on the test. And so I just kind of did this. So we know NOI is the easiest one because it's multiplication doesn't matter the order. And then we know both of them are NOI divided by and then just the other thing. So if it's value, you know it's cap rate, if it's cap rate, you know it's value. Really simple, it should take you like two minutes to memorize. And then lastly, I have one last chart that I created that you'll need to remember, that'll be really helpful to remember. And it is how to calculate your total expenses. Or your TE. So you calculate that by adding your operating expenses plus your debt services plus your replacement reserve. So all of your expenses, right there. It's in the name. So you need that one, and then you'll need to also calculate your GOI, which is your gross operating income. You'll need to calculate your BEOR, which is your break-even occupancy ratio, and your other, I'm sorry, operating expense ratio. I'm sorry, the first one, I, I think I said other expense. I meant operating expense. Op operating expenses plus debt services plus one reserve. So both your break-even occupancy ratio and your operating expense ratio are divided by EGI, so just remember that. And then your GOI is EGI divided by OI. Break-even occupancy ratio is your TE, your total expenses, divided by EGI and your operating expense ratio is your operating expenses divided by your EGI. So just gonna look at it and remember which ones are divided by what. It's pretty easy. So once you memorize this, you'll be golden. And then obviously just the only other math I would say to study for is to know how to do percentages really well, just simple percentages. Um, and then most of the most of the word problems are pretty self-explanatory. Self there were a few tricky ones, but not enough to make you flunk the whole test. They're pretty much common sense. Um, what I like to do when I'm taking an exam is I like to kind of calculate what I, if I think I'm going to pass the exam or not, by, if it's an online exam, what you can do is go through every single question as you're taking the exam, every single question that you're not 100% sure on, that, like, you think there's any percentage that you might get incorrect, flag it, and then finish the exam, go through all the questions, finish the exam, and, and see how many questions that you had flagged then, out of the number of questions the total number of questions, and then you can find out, like, did I at least get 70% right? Because for the CAM, you only need 70% to pass, and there's 185 questions, and you get four hours, by the way. 
So I flagged 50 questions, there were 50 possible questions that I could have gotten wrong. 50 divided by 185 was like 70%. So I knew even if I got every single question that I flagged wrong, I was still going to pass the test. So I just kind of stopped stressing at that point and didn't waste a bunch of time. I was going to do an example question here, but I don't really think it's necessary because probably I'll get one view on this entire video, but I hope this helped, and if you guys do want me to do an example video, then let me know. If I get enough requests, I will do one for you, but good luck, um, you'll do well. Alright, take care.